Six steps were all done to understand the question. If you take it as simply as this all the time, you will absolutely not have any problems with problem solving questions in science. It is well worth memorizing them and you need to memorize them in a certain format. And the format goes like this. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to get a grade nine in physics. Now, physics is a bugbear for a lot of students, especially aspiring students who want to go to say medicine or a more of a language based subject. Physics tends to come hard to them. I'm going to try to break down physics for you in a way that made life so much easier for me. I went into engineering, which is physics heavy uh, as a degree at Oxford University. Let's get straight to the matter. You've got to recognize and learn maths. You've got to be comfortable with the fundamentals of maths, especially algebraic equations. I've made a video on how to get a grade nine in maths. I would recommend that you go and watch that first. Number two, you've got to learn all the formulas that exist in your physics GCSE spec. I'm going to highlight here all the key formulas that are required, for example, for AQA physics. Something similar applies to all the other exam boards. You should make your own list of all the formulas that you need to know and memorize them. That is the fundamental step. I wouldn't even go to any papers without memorizing these 15, 10 formulas. I know a lot of formulas are given on the equation sheet, but a true grade nine student should have them memorized. And the reason for this is when you're looking at a question, you should be able to recognize, aha, this formula applies to this question. Now, if you're trying to look at the question paper and the data sheet, and you're trying to match the two together, A, you're wasting time, and B, it's unlikely that you'll be able to find the right combination that connects the question to the formula that is required. You need to memorize this beforehand. Practicals are about 20% of your physics exam paper. It is well worth memorizing them and you need to memorize them in a certain format. And the format goes like this. Number one, objective. Number two, you need to know all the apparatus or equipment. Number three, you need to know the errors. And the way I like to do it is I like to write the errors and the mitigations next to them. So you've got the errors and the mitigations in a table form. Error, error number one associated with this mitigation that goes with it. Error number two and you know mitigation number two. Similarly, you wanna do hazards or risks and safety in another column. Students learn them separately and I don't think that's useful because you can't then connect the recommended safety measure for uh, a particular hazard. If there's variations in an experiment, learn the different variations. And, uh, and sometimes you may need to know some theory, some analysis, or a particular graph needs to be drawn afterwards. What's important is you don't need to know the actual results. You just need to know the rough theory about it. That is the format that you need to know for each practical. I find it quite boring. It's the most boring part of science for me, the actual practicals in terms of for exam preparation, but it's very important. You can literally memorize 20% of the paper beforehand. And you do that by learning the practical. That's it. They can't ask you any other questions on practicals other than what I've mentioned. This is my own format. Like after years of kind of teaching this and looking at it from a typical engineer's perspective, I've devised a cheat sheet for practicals and this is it. I'm telling you, there is no more you need to know on practicals than this. One final point about practicals though, is I would recommend you watch the actual video of the practicals. I know a lot of you guys have been through the COVID uh, pandemic period and you may not have done the practical. It's really important that you visualize it by seeing the actual practical. I'm not telling you to go on YouTube and look at the format of the practical for the exam. No, I've told you that and you can work that out. Now, I'm talking about the actual video that you can watch. You have a picture playing in your head when you're thinking about the practical. You're like, oh, first the guy pours the, the, the HCL into the beaker, etc., etc. Another section which all exam boards have is a section called working scientifically. It's very important that you do learn these parts. So there's stuff like uncertainty, there's stuff like repeatability and so on and so forth. So you read through this and you just learn the key points. So it's just another chapter that you need to know. And this applies to all three sciences. Now the big problem, which is problem solving in science-based subjects. So how do you problem solve in physics? We've got a scary looking question, okay? Because why is it scary? Because they've thrown in this word, this here. I don't even know how to pronounce this here. This is acid acetylacetylic acid what on earth is that like you know most students would be looking at that and having a heart attack They're like whoa what, what on earth is this like i've never learned this word before that's fine yeah one of the ways they can make a question scary is by you know using unfamiliar terms but the logic will always be the same i suggest a few steps well here are my steps that i would recommend that you utilize and they might sound a bit babyish, but I've made them like that on purpose. Number one, read one phrase at a time. The relative 
formula mass of acetyl acid acetyl acid 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 number two understand the phrase when you read it make sure you've actually understood what it means do not move on until you've understood that phrase it's to understand one phrase yet yeah? to understand understand it that's the mr of acetyl salicylic acid is 180. Hmm. not that bad actually it's just telling us the mr of acetyl salicylic acid is 180. have i understood it have we understood it because we're only looking at literally one sentence one phrase i think we have number three write down the key information from that phrase the way you write down the key information is in an equation form. If they say, for example, this beaker has 10 milliliters of HCl in it, so you're going to put down beaker volume equals 10 milliliters. You need to put that information down for yourself. And I'm going to say is equal to 180. So when I say write down the key info, okay, I mean pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time you're writing an equation. You need to be comfortable with equations. So you need to be comfortable with the maths. Uh, part of algebra yeah so that's that's something to be understood number four is repeat steps one to three for the rest of the passage it is asking us to work work out the number of moles i'm trying to understand that yeah okay so what have you understood from it what do you need to write down what's the key info from that the number of moles so that's also a key piece of information number of moles of what the acetosilic acid so i'm gonna um and it's question mark in this case yeah there's no information this is what we are working out number five is if there are multiple sources for example they've got a text then they might have a diagram they might have a table you need to make sure the information is the same because sometimes what they do and they're very snidey like this what they'll do is they'll mention all of the points minus one in the table for example or they'll mention one additional point whichever way around it looks like to the naked eye that all the information in the different sources are basically the same when you see multiple sources in a question, right? So if it says figure one and there's a text or a little blurb, be on the alert, think, aha, these guys, these suckers are trying to, you know, con me here. Next step is to cycle through all the formulas. And if you remember, I mentioned that you needed to memorize the formulas. The way I think about it is these formulas are on like a revolver and I'm revolving through them. I'm like, which formula do I need for this particular question? Is it this one? Is it this one? Is it this one? Oh no, it's this one. This has all of the key points that they mentioned here. And so you go from there. Sometimes you might need multiple formulas, but you write down all the formulas that the information you've just jotted down could be related to. Now that you've written down all the information, what you need to do is say, okay, what science do I know? What formula or what rule do I know that applies to this? Moles equals mass over mr number seven answer the question solve the question a big part of science exams right is these long worded questions and the way you break them down is like this until step seven here's the funny thing we hadn't done any science at all maybe in step six you could say we did science by applying uh, writing down the formula but actually applying the numbers into the formula is done in step seven six steps were all done to understand the question i guarantee you if you take it as simply as this all the time even for the easier questions when you're starting out you will absolutely not have any problems with problem solving questions in science if you, you're stuck for some conceptual knowledge you can go to khan academy pretty good crash course on youtube but the caveat there is that it's not gcse specific bbc by size which is gcse specific purchase the grade seven to nine workbooks uh, for collins uh, grade eight to nine cgp workbooks and i mentioned this in my other videos you can check out some of my other videos if you're finding that you are struggling with uh, the content start with the foundational papers see what areas you're struggling with record your results on a benchmarking file and uh, go from there once you've recorded your mistakes we can then work on improving those specific areas every time you make a mistake your job is to eliminate these mistakes so hopefully if you can master the foundation papers and you can score like 90 percent on it then you want to go onto the old spec higher papers depending on like when you're watching this video and if you've got enough time or not if you don't have enough time then just go straight to the new spec papers the reason i say start with the old spec is because 
there's not enough new spec papers usually. You start with the older spec because they're slightly easier and you can work from that and then move on to the new spec papers. Generally speaking, the tougher questions are at the back. If they are at the back, then you want to apply your brain when it's at its freshest to the hardest questions. If you're struggling on a particular topic, what I would say is take a break from exam papers and move on to topic questions. And physics and math tutor is a classic site that a lot of students use. But actually, I don't think it's that great for GCSE. Physics and math tutor isn't really updated regularly and they have questions that are not like exactly exam questions from official papers. People use it because they don't know any better. I would recommend that you go and do exam topic questions from your own exam board specifically. And the final point I want to mention is treat the examiner like an idiot. What that means is write down every single step. Yeah, show you're working every single time because a lot of it is not just for the examiner. Of course, the examiner's not an idiot, but number one, they can't read your mind. And number two, if you're treating the examiner as an idiot, actually what you're doing is you're ensuring that you are not going to make silly mistakes. If you enjoyed the tips on this video, um, you can check out some of the other videos that I've made on how to get grade nines and catch you soon.